Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got another video, uh, part of this transitions or blend sort of series I'm doing. This time it's uh, looking at uh, transitioning from a square to a circle. Um, just one way of doing it. Um, so I've got five different files here, which kind of an evolution from the first one. You know, I've just sort of um, redefined things as I went. Bit of a rainy day project here. We've got a storm coming up from the Southern Ocean in New Zealand, so it's definitely an indoor day. Hence, let's do some SolidWorks. Okie dokie. So I'm going to open each one of these files from V1 through to V5 and just, just sort of explain the logic behind what I've done. Okay, open number one here. So if I roll back to the beginning. I've created a square, which I can also make rectangular if I want. Um, so the aim of set this setup is that, that you can make this rectangular and everything will update, okay? And I've created a plane, distance 80 millimeters away, and a circle. And then I'm going to define one quarter of uh, the square end. I'm creating my own blend on the corner. So this this blend here is a style spline. I've used this uh, radius here to set the size of it, set back from the corner, and then have a look at the spline. It's a degree seven, so it's got eight points. Um, and one, two, three, four. These are control polygon segments are collinear to this line, and the same down here. And then I've got equal length relationship on all the control polygon segments apart from here, so it's uh, identical. And then to control this setback here, this is a uh, 0.85 of this dimension here. So I can, you know, change this and this will update and the curvature sort of relationship stays fairly similar. Curved graph. So theoretically that's a G3 connection around this corner. Okay. So I've left this set up the same in all of the files, the corner. That's just what I do in between the changes. Okay, so I've extruded that surface back 10 millimeters. And then up this end here where the circle is, I've created uh, an arc, a quarter of the circle, and extruded that out. And the most simple way of doing this And the version one is just a boundary surface, direction one only, where on one end I've used the selection manager to pick the three edges of this extrude, and on the other end just the single edge of the extruded arc. Curvature to face on both both um, boundaries, and then I've just left the tangent influence at one. Okay, and then I've knitted that, mirrored the quadrants around, and kept the ends and solidified. Okay, so if I turn off. So the computer's basically doing everything between here and here. I've got no control over. Oh, I should show you this. So because on this end we've got three entities, I've turned mergent, merged tangent faces off because when the boundary blend's built, I want to have, I like to know where it's calculating this blend, uh, just, you know, like this curve could be coming out here. I've got no control over it, the way I've set this up. So it's just sort of computers figuring out where this, where this uh, corner is blending into the circle. So if you went in here and you turn merge tangent faces, then I don't get that feedback. Can't see where it is. 
Um, so I prefer to leave it on. Okay. So version one, I've got no control over the width of this um, blend as it comes along the transition from the square to the circle. So the next file would be looking at adding some control into this. Because you might want it sharper or something or softer. So now I'm going to swap over into version two. Okay, so version two, I'll roll back here. So I've got the extrudes, this is all the same. What I have done, however, is in this first sketch, I've added a construction line from, this, from the origin out to this corner point. And then I've created a plane through that normal to the front plane and then using that plane I've created two offset planes and these planes here are offset from that new plane and through the point here where this uh, corner blend starts and ends and then I've used those planes to split the arc down this end as you can see. And then when I create this boundary surface, I now use the selection manager on the second boundary down this end, pick the three entities and left uh, curvature, curvature face on both boundaries. So now as you can see, this blend, instead of being narrower and being um, resultant, by conversion one, it now tracks where this plane, where these planes have split the face on the end. So this this uh, blend won't be as pointy in this area because it's a bit wider down here. Yeah, so that's a bit better. And also the reason I put these planes in twice rather than just doing it once and then mirroring that over to split the circle is you know what if you wanted to go make this rectangular instead of um oops instead of square so that's updating the plane is in the sketch because this control line uh, the control Construction line there is rotating round, and my sketches there are splitting the arc on that end. Okay, so I'll just put this back to 50. I've got some flexibility in there. Version 3, I wanted to look at what if I wanted to make this wider, you know, on the make the blend transition to be wider. So I've actually got control over, it's not just a, this relationship here, I've got independence on this end. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my version 3 file now. So as you can see now, the blend's getting wider, and I have control over that. So all I've done, I'll go back here, and look at these sketches, is I have an offset dimension from there. Instead of, instead of being coincident or parallel, and coincident to this point on the blend, I can specify a dimension and offset from that central plane. And again, I've just split the surface and added the boundary surface as before. That's it. Now this feathers out wider. So I've got control over that with these um, these dimensions. you can see so that gets wider and softer softer earlier and again I've knitted that and 
solidified it. Okay, version four, I thought, well, the computer's figuring out what's going along in here. It's a shame I can't use, um, because what I've started doing is, 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 is adding variables here to control relationships, but one that you can't control outside of the feature is tangent length. So this this guy here, you can't control this with a uh, with a global variable or link it to some other dimension. Because otherwise, I could link it to the distance between the circle and the square. So if you made this transition longer, the um, the tangent influence might change. Um, or you can control that manually outside without having to go into the boundary surface. So that's a bit of a pain. So the only way I'm going to get around that is to um, add sketches in here. Add curves in here to control the the flow through here. So that's my version four file. This guy here. So what I've done is I still have these planes uh, splitting the arc here. Except I've now added three D sketches. So this is a degree five. There's the air spline, style spline, six points. Uh, these control polygons here are equal length and they are collinear to the split, this edge here, and the same at this end here. And to control the length, this distance here to here, I've added, I have a blend length, which is controlling the distance from the square to the circle. And then I've added a blend length multiplier, which is here. So this distance here is blend length, which is 80, divided by 2, and then multiplied by the blend length multiplier. So if I want to change this, um, this dimension here, I do it through the... through this equation. And the reason I've done that is because I've got multiple sketches that need to go in to control this blend, and I don't want to have to go into each one of them to change a dimension. So I don't want to have to go into each one to change a dimension. So I've added another 3D sketch here, and that one there has got the same formula controlling the distance between the second CV and the end point. Okay, and now I've had to add sketches on the top and right plane as well to complete the full boundary set for the um for the boundary surface and again these are controlled again the same way so boundary surface is changed because i've added those four sketches into the second direction and what i've also done is made the um any of the sketches on a mirror axis or a mirror plane normal normal to section Uh, and then again, knitted everything together, mirrored it over. So now I've got control over the abruptness or how quickly this um, transitions without having to go into the boundary skit, boundary surface and change the, the tangent length, which is a bit of a pain. So I can go in here and I can go with this multiplier, I could go 0 0.6, that rebuild. And you can see what's happened there. Hang on, I'll just turn zebra stripes on. Turn these edges off. Sometimes you have to push enter twice. Okay, so as you can see, I can control this. By changing one dimension and everything updates. 
which is much easier than having to go onto the um the boundary surface and modifying it there. So that flow's pretty good. I'm just going to change it back to uh, uh, point eight because uh I've got a comparison of all the parts at the end. Okay. And then last last version version five because I thought hey this corner here I've set it up as G three, which I can do in my old version of SolidWorks before the G three constraint was added because um I'm I'm making the spline collinear to a line so I thought I'm doing the same in this second direction here so these splines which I set up the curvature continuous to this line here so why not try and make those splines now uh g3 to this line so g3 in both directions so to do that all i've done is i've gone on to the spline added an extra control you see on both ends which brings our curve single span curve curve degree seven with eight points and again i've constrained the um the distance between the first point and the one to third point on each end with this equation and you can see that see the curvature is coming down and it's flattening out like that rather than peaking up straight away as it was with the curvature continuous version so i've modified all the sketches to be a degree seven spline with eight points which gives us this the sort of theoretically because I've got no way to check it G3 version um, and again that should be flexible so I can go 40 you know if you want to make that that rectangular um, what else have I got my equations I can change the blend length here, so I want to make this longer. Make that 100 and rebuild. And because my splines here have a, an equation based on the, this relationship here with this length, their tangent length, they get longer. This distance between these CVs. So, you know, instead of it being abrupt, like, you know, quite flat through the middle, it sort of fills out depending on the length here. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we have a quick look with the zebra stripes. I'll wrap this up because this is uh, getting a bit long winded. Okay, so there you go. That's uh, one way to blend a square to a circle. I'll just show all of them together. Where are they? Here we go. Um, one way to do it. It all depends on what you want. You might want a sharp, if you have a sharp corner here through the circle, that's another thing entirely. But I thought I'd just start with doing one where it was a, like a, 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 a radius or a blended corner on the square. So you can see the difference here. This is quite sharp through here. Um, and as we go through the iterations, it transitions out much sort of smoother into the circle. Ending with this one here, which is the G3 in both directions version. Oh, all right. Well, I hope that's useful. Uh, if you find this helpful at all, can you please subscribe to my channel? Um, motivates me to keep making these things. And um, I'll stick, I'll stick a few of the files in the uh, description if anybody wants to download them and have a look, see how I built them. All good. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Thanks very much.